Right there you go. Welcome back everybody. It's time to dig into the distributor for the Farmall Preparation H restoration project. I have been through this distributor before, but it's been well, quite a while. And it's had several sets of points and condensers, caps, rotors along the way. So it's ready for a refresh. That's what we are going to start right after I finish talking. So this is actually one of two distributors that we are going to be going through in the next couple of episodes. Stick around to the end to find out why we're doing a second one. I think it's going to make for a very well-rounded set of instructional videos. So I should start by saying this is not the IH built distributor. This is the aftermarket Delco Remy distributor. And you can tell because it has this angle drive at the bottom that points the distributor vertically, straight up into the air. The IH built distributors had like a drive adapter, but they were horizontal. They just pointed straight back. These Delco Remy units are pretty common to find on Farmall H's and M's of the 19, late 30s through the 40s. Um, I believe it was 47-ish before the um, IH horizontal distributor drive became very common. I may be incorrect about that, so if I am, post up in the comment section down below. But uh, that Delco Remy unit is a common, we'll call it a field changeover modification that was done to tractors that originally came with magnetos, okay? And this being a 1945 model, it's the tail end of World War II production, so chances are pretty good that it had a magneto originally, and that's why we have that vertical aftermarket Delco distributor on it now. So you all know what the plan is. Let's get into it. First order of business, wires. We can get all these wires off. They're all going to be replaced. We can discard them with extreme prejudice. All right, we've got the coil wire. Might as well come off. Lug terminal on the side. I don't remember, no, I did not use a um, an open terminal. We have a ring terminal on, so the nut has to come completely off. And we've got one down on the coil here. There we are. Loosening the distributor clamp bolts now. One, and two, and the distributor will pull straight out. Now, there we go. Looks good. Lots of good grease in there yet. Should be, I packed it pretty full the last time. The coil comes off the back now, so half inch wrench. There's a bolt on each side for the coil bracket. There's one, two, all right. We might as well take the coil out of the clamp. There's just this, um, this screw goes through, cinches tight. We're not going to abuse this coil because it is still a good coil. At least it was last time I drove the tractor. So we can take the third bolt out and the cover here will come off the back of the drive housing. And that's that nice grease I was telling you about. Yeah, plenty of it in there yet. Now on these drives, the adapter here typically has the nut staked to the uh, center threads. This one, not so much anymore because I've had it on and off a couple different times, but 
you don't really have to do anything like to grind the old stakes out or anything like that. Just start removing the nut. It'll be all right. Now I remember, yeah, we've got some old Loctite on there. That's what I did. I put Loctite on it. That's right. So, so much so that the lock washer wanted to stay on. And typically these hubs do not put up too much of a fight. They're just on a straight shaft with a single key. Yeah, there we go. Yep, there we are. There's the woodruff key. And there's also a small thrust washer back here. Oh, we're gonna need a pick for that. No, there we go. Grease was sticking it down. Very important to keep track of that. And now the shaft should just slide right out the other side. Yep. This gear is um, pinned on and it's peened over on each side. We typically don't do anything with that gear if it's not loose. This one's good and tight. So that does it for the disassembly of the angle drive. Assuming this bushing is good, it was last time and I haven't seen any reason to uh, suspect that it isn't now. We'll finish cleaning it the rest of the way up and give it a good check though before we're through. Distributor up next, and these are pretty simple units, but there are a fair amount of uh, bits and pieces on the inside. So a few really easy pieces to come off first on the bench here, and then we'll go over to the vise. So, of course, two clips, and the distributor cap comes off. Beneath that is the distributor rotor, lifts right off, and we've got the dust cover, felt dust seal in the center, and we do have like a flat rubber gasket around the perimeter as well. So that exposes the points and the condenser. Let's go to the vise. All right, solidly in the vise, we can work on it without everything moving around. So pretty simple the way this works, at least the upper portion anyhow. So. Um, this is basically called the cam, this center shaft right here, because it has like four little cam lobes on it. And when it rotates, you can see the lobes come around and they'll open the points and close the points. Points open and close, open, close. That's how you get your spark, all right? And all this stuff is put together pretty simply, all right? There's a, uh, a screw right here holds the condenser down. The condenser has a band that goes around the body. All right. So we can pull that out. That's loose. We've got the points plate right here. So we have, this is the screw that holds the points down. This is just an eccentric. Okay. And that's what uh, the eccentric is what um, sets your points gap. So we'll remove the main anchor screw. They aren't very long, you run out of threads pretty quickly. But you can see as I turn this eccentric, you can see it, it moves that points plate side to side. All right, that's how all that works. And all of the electrical leads are secured beneath the nut on that small stud. Let's move back that off. We should be able to, yep, pull the condenser lug out and points plate should come out comes off of that peg right there next we need to remove this contact lead from the housing and this is a similar setup to the terminals that passed through the generator housing so it's just a steel stud that has an insulating washer on the outside and this insulating block that it passes through keeps it from shorting out against the housing itself. The little stud comes out, you can see square end on there, keeps it from turning, pretty simple. Next, we need to take this flat plate out. That's what separates the upper portion of the distributor from the lower portion. Three screws hold it in, and two of the screws also hold these um, cap clips to the outside. 
So we'll just begin by taking those off. Keep rotating it around so you can see what I'm doing. And the third screw just comes in from the back side. All right, and with those out, the plate just comes right out the top. This eccentric screw is mashed over on the back side, so it does not come out. It just rotates in there. So now we are into the lower portion of the distributor, and this is where the centrifugal advance weights are housed. And it sounds complicated, it's really not. In a nutshell, it takes a certain amount of time to trip the points, to initiate the spark, to send it out to the spark plugs. And when the engine is running at low speed, we can have a pretty fixed static timing, okay? Because the engine's not going so fast that it is starting to outrun the amount of time it takes for that spark process to happen. But at higher engine speeds, we're going to need to advance the spark timing to basically stay ahead of those pistons that are coming up faster and faster all the time, all right? Because it takes a certain amount of time to trip the points and throw the spark out to the spark plugs. And the way they accomplish that is with a set of flyweights down in here. So we've got the flyweights are here and here beneath this flat plate, and they are um, hooked to these springs, which are there to resist the centrifugal force of the flyweights. But after a certain RPM, these springs will start to stretch out, the flyweights will start to fling out, and that advances the uh, cam portion of the distributor basically starts tripping those points sooner and sooner to keep up with that engine that's going faster and faster. And to see how it works, if I grab the bottom of the distributor shaft, okay, and I'm going to hold the bottom of this shaft from moving, all right? The shaft does not move at all. But you can see how this upper portion, the cam portion, still has a few degrees of rotation as those flyweights come out. And that's how your advance actually works okay so the top portion shaft is not directly connected to the bottom yeah the bottom drives it but it has a certain amount of leeway that's dictated through those advance weights and those springs that keeps it in proper time and the first thing we want to do is unhook the springs from their pegs there's one and two. Tease them out of there with a hook pick here. And next, there's some tiny little fold over locks. You can just barely see the tabs right there and right there need to be flattened out. And then you loosen those nuts, take them off. See that? Tiny little lock fits right on the tip of your finger. The flat plate comes off next. Now you should be able to get a better view of when the flyweights fling out, it will advance the cam. Okay. Pretty simple how that actually works. So at this point you can just lift the cam right off of the shaft, a little bushing inside there you want to make sure is good. And the flyweights can come off of the pegs and there are two of them. They're just placed one on top of the other. All right, so all we're left with now is the shaft in the housing. And since this top plate is permanently attached to the shaft, what we're going to have to do is remove the gear from the bottom and then that allows the shaft to go out the top. And the gear is pinned on and you can see they have, uh, that's a factory peening on each side yet. They've peened over, mashed over uh, the ends of that pin, holds it all together. So the only way to do that is to file and drill. All right, I've got 
the uh, the mashed overhead filed off on this side so we have exposed just the actual round body of the pin all right and this gear is very hard and the pin is very soft so you'll know when you start hitting the gear the file is just going to ride right over okay the gears too too hard to even mark with a file so the reason why i wanted to get down to just the round body of the pin is so that i can center punch it next because i'm going to have to drill just a little bit out before we can actually loosen the material fit to the gear on this side but for reference that's what we started with a pretty good sized mashed over peened over end and we've filed it right back down to being perfectly round again That should be enough now to drift the pin out. Oh yeah. Right there. I was hoping to have caught it. There it is. Now the gear should just, yep, come right off the end of the shaft like that. We will have a couple of washers on the end. Very thin one. You definitely want to keep track of all these. They are going to uh, gauge the end play. There's a thicker one. And we should now be able to, yep, simply push the shaft right out the top. There we are. Everything's looking good for the most part, so we have a disassembled distributor. One additional step I am going to take. Some well-meaning soul in the past decided to take a hammer to the tag. We couldn't have taken it to the metal body housing of the distributor. We decided to take it to the tag. I'm, I'm going to remove that tag and we'll stamp a new one, much like we did with the starter for the H, just to preserve the data on here because it's getting a little bit tough to read with all that damage. All right, there's the old tag. And it doesn't matter how well you try to clean these. I've even cleaned this and rattle canned at once. These just trap a lot of dirt behind those tags. So we can get that cleaned very well too. So here we are. And at the beginning of the episode, I told you all we were going to be doing two distributors total. So here's the one that we just took apart, distributor and drive. Here is another aftermarket Delco Remy vertical distributor and drive right here, already been completely disassembled, cleaned, inspected. Now, what we're gonna do right here is build this one back up to the original points and condenser setup. This one, however, we are eliminating points and condenser and going with the electronic pickup ignition, all right? And several reasons why I wanted to do this. Uh, one, I've been hearing a lot of good things about the electronic ignition systems, by and large. Um, the people that like them, love them. The people that do not like them, absolutely hate them. But I've talked to far more people that love them than hate them. And I've kind of been thinking about doing one for a while. Now I can already hear the keystrokes in the comment section saying, but Squatch, you won't put an alternator on a tractor, so why would you do an electronic ignition? My justification for that is an alternator completely replaces a component that this tractor was designed to have. This electronic ignition pickup, it does not replace the distributor or the drive. It just replaces the points and condensers. And you see all the plastic in the construction on these things? It's been that way for about 20 years now. The quality of points and condensers on the market today definitely leaves something to be desired. So as far as I'm concerned, rebuilding with points and condensers, you're already not putting these things back to the way they once were quality-wise, for sure. And I've had plenty of problems with points and condensers in the past. They usually only last a few years per set, and then you're having to replace them, whereas 
Back in the day, you could get 20 years out of a set with regular maintenance and keeping the contacts clean and all that. So um, I'm kind of excited to try the electronic ignition and that's what will be going on to the H, will be the electronic distributor. This one will be held in reserve for having the option of putting everything back to a points and condenser setup. So there are some drawbacks to the electronic pickups. Um, if the little processor right here, the brain box goes bad, you're pretty much dead in the water until you get a new one. So that's another reason why having a traditional points and condenser setup on hand will be a convenient thing. But if I like this electronic setup, I'll probably be buying another kit or two just to have on hand for future upgrades. So if a piece there goes bad, it's not the end of the world. This will be a rather interesting experiment that you all can kind of partake in through YouTube where you can see kind of how things work for me, if I like it or not, in case you've been on the fence as to whether or not you want to try an electronic ignition conversion, this will kind of be your test bit. All right, so I'll be the guinea pig. Another reason why I decided this distributor would be a good one for the electronic ignition was it has a cam in it that was not greased back in its day, and it ran a long time actuating those points contacts with absolutely no lube on those lobes at all. So we've got some wear on all four of these high spots. So this one is a perfect candidate to go ahead and just bypass the the old points setup because none of that stuff needs to have um, lobes that are in good condition. So that's another reason why this one will be a good unit to do that conversion to. Here's a question I've got for you all though. So in the IH operator's manuals, they show, now this is an IH horizontal distributor. These are Delco verticals, so there is a difference, but they show this pipe plug on the drive housing plus the pipe plug on the distributor body to be lubrication contact points for that ignition setup. It says every six months or after every 500 hours of operation, whichever occurs first, remove the grease plugs and insert lubrication fittings. Apply pressure gun grease or chassis lubricant to the distributor fitting until a small quantity comes out the relief hole opposite the plug. Apply several strokes of the gun to the drive housing fitting. Now, I pulled those plugs off of the um, Delco units, which are very similar in design, and I don't understand how any of that lubrication is supposed to go anywhere. Firstly, we do not have a relief opening on the opposite side. We just have the plug opening. Now, both distributors are the same way. When you take the plug out, all you see is just a absolutely closed off bushing on the back side, and the bushing also seals at each end. There is a small cavity in both of these, but, and they both did have oil in them, but I don't see where the oil that's inside of here can go. It's not gonna to get to the shaft. It can't leak out. It can't go anywhere. So why is there oil in there? They've got similarly um, styled plugs and now the drive housings are the same way. So granted, this is the wide body Delco. This is the narrow body Delco housing. They're the same thing though, other than that. And again, they both had a plug right there. You take it out and all you see is just a closed off bushing. There is no inlet hole anywhere to allow any of the lubrication that you would put in, into that hole to go. Again, no relief fitting on the opposite side. This one actually has quite an amount of an amber colored, almost like a gear lubricant in it, but it's the same way, no relief hole. There is no inlet hole in the bushing to let it in anywhere. The bushings seal those passages end to end. So again, any lubrication you put in these is also not gonna go anywhere. So if anybody knows more about these Delco verticals than I do, feel free to post up in the comment section down below. But um, that's going to do it for the work today. We've got all our new parts here and ready. Um, tomorrow we'll get back out here and then we'll start building up distributors. I think it's gonna be rather fun. So thank you for watching everyone. Hope to see y'all back again. We'll keep busy here.